The second exercise that you have is what is called, quote, corrective makeup. Now, a word about, quote, corrective makeup. Corrective implies that there is something wrong and that you are having to fix it. The reason I say, quote, corrective makeup is because the mantra of this class is, there is nothing wrong with my face. Most of you taking this and looking at these are going to be either actors who are doing this to make up your own face for stage, or costume designers or other designers who are looking to do this to help actors make up their faces and or design makeup that goes with costumes, scenery, etc. So what you're wanting on stage are usually characters. In other words, it may be something that a woman who's going to a department store wants to hide the fact that she has a broken nose uh, and use makeup to obscure that. Or a person might have some sort of skin discoloration and they want to go and make that go away. Or me, I could say, hate my freckles and want that to disappear. In the real world, you do corrective makeup to fix things that you think are wrong with your face. However, on stage, most often, you're trying to do a character. And a character may be old, they may be plain, they may have a broken nose when you don't have a broken nose. So the reason you are doing corrective makeup is when you are doing a character that happens to look younger, more perfect, more lovely, and more generic than you. So your face does not have something wrong with it. Your face is your face. And you are taking your face in the course of this class and putting different kinds of faces on top of it and blending them with it to make the most of your facial expression on stage. When you're doing corrective makeup, in quotes, most often what you're doing it for is you have been given a role like something like a Gilbert and Sullivan chorus or the chorus in Oklahoma, something where you must be pretty young and generic. Or you've been given a role where you're playing somebody pretty young and generic and you're me and you're 46. <laughs> so you're going and using things to go and even out your face and make it look more generic. Now, our ideas of what are pretty have a lot to do with our built-in desire to try and make things go towards the median. If you take faces in photographs of individual people and show them to people, they will go and find some of them prettier than others. If, however, you take those same faces, each of them with their diversity, and you start to morph them by putting two of them together in computer versions, or even in the 19th century, a uh, notable scientist took the negatives and superimposed more than one face over another as a way of trying to figure out particular types. And something he discovered when he morphed many of these together, and something which scientists recently have discovered when they take faces and morph them and morph them and morph them so that you have a face that's composed of two people or of three people or of four people, that the more people they morph together, the prettier people think the face is. In other words, what you're trying to do when you do a quote corrective makeup is you're trying to make the face of the person that would exist if everyone on earth had sex with everyone else and they produced 
a baby that had the average and most healthy genes of everyone on Earth. And that is what you're trying to do in, quote, corrective makeup. You're trying to take away things that you normally do on stage that are individualized character and put in on your face those things which are generic and average. In other words, if you have, as I do, a fairly short nose, you will be trying to make it look longer. If, on the other hand, you have a very long nose, you will be trying to make it shorter. If you have, as I do, brows that go down like this, I will be trying to make this area appear higher. If, on the other hand, you have giant sheep-like eyes, well, you might want to go and keep those because we also have a thing in our heads that says babies are cute and should be protected and we have warm, positive feelings towards them. So if you do larger than average eyes, and indeed when they take these morphed pictures, if they pick, take the ones at, that have the larger eyes, people like that even better. So that is one thing that is a little bit outside of average that you could do. But if you're getting all the way into the land of bug eyes, you don't want to do this. Not to look like a keen painting. So you're trying to go and take things about your face that are not the average and diminish them, and things that are the average and make the most of them. You're also, if you're other than, say, in your 20s, uh, you are probably wanting to go and if you're a bit younger than that, you're probably trying to look a little bit older and more sophisticated. And if you're uh, older than that, you are definitely trying to go and minimize the effects of aging. So what we will do is first put on base. If you are uh, a very light-skinned person, you will want to go and make it a hair darker. If you are a very, very dark-skinned person, you will want to make it a hair lighter. However, those of you who are in the middle, you want something close to your skin tone because we're trying to head towards you. Okay, having put on my base, I'm now going to take some highlighter and shadow and start messing about. The first area I'm going to mess about is my forehead. As you can see, I keep my hair going at a slightly rounded edge. Part of the reason I do that is I know that the average forehead, especially on female, tends to be this kind of rounded look. And so the average is what most people like. You want that rounded part. The square forehead also um, is associated with men, particularly with male pattern baldness, which eventually tends to cause a couple of sections up here to become shorter. So this tends to look older, and it tends to look masculine. Uh, when putting all those faces together, the faces that people like uh, tend to be ones that have been slightly hyperfeminized. Slightly feminized faces are, again, considered to be things that are less threatening and more inclined to you want to protect. And so you get more positive responses and more notions that that is beautiful. So uh, because I've got this square forehead, which is associated more with age and with men, I'm going to make that go away. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go and take a shadow color and blend that into my hairline. And I'm using a little black shadow because I have European black hair. 
and brown shadow because that will blend in with the skin tone. And it goes and gives this section, if I were to pull it back, um, the appearance of having more hair on it. Uh, this is also something if you're a guy and you are starting to get a bald spot somewhere. <sighs> you know that stuff that looks like shoe spray for your head? That looks really stupid in the real world, and I'm amazed that they managed to still sell it in the real world. But on stage, you can fluff up your hair and spray that little bald spot, and you, from 10 feet away, it's completely convincing. So uh, it's a really good thing to do. It's also really good if you're female and older and have had some hair loss. You can go and fill in with the appropriate color that way. So I put in the two little dark bits here. Now, last time when I was going and doing myself only more so, I put in a shadow in here and two stripes of highlight across the two bones that went here and here. I did the upper one very straight because on me it is very straight. It goes straight across here. However, for corrective makeup, I want to go and emphasize that oval that isn't really there that I'm just putting in. So I'm going to take, and instead of doing that as a straight line, I'm going to curve that into a rounder shape. This will emphasize that rounded top. And you put a little extra highlighter there because high foreheads are something that in a lot of cultures are associated with being more intelligent. Possibly this is the reason fluffy bangs are usually, in costume purposes and so on, used for to indicate, hi, I'm a bimbo, <laughs> it, because it lowers the forehead appearance. Now, the having a little shadow in the center here as I did for myself only more so, isn't particularly unusual. It isn't extreme one way or the other, so I'm going to keep that in there. I'm making it, however, a little bit less pronounced by blending a little better. Then, uh, eyebrows. When I was a child, I discovered that I had something that, well, I didn't discover it until I was an adult, but when I was a child, I was picked at quite a bit by my fellow students, small children, who were often convinced, for reasons I never understood, that I was thinking evil things about them. Now, part of the reason for this has to do with the fact that I have evil eyebrows. Yes, I have evil eyebrows. They're dark, they arch, and when I was a small child, they grew all the way to here. In fact, they still do. I now go and cut a section of eyebrows simply so that I do not frighten my students quite so much. <laughs> but if you have very dark brows that go together in the center, uh, especially if they go completely together in the center, completely together in the center is supposed to mean you're a werewolf. Uh, I'm not a werewolf, I merely had evil eyebrows. Um, so where you have eyebrows that are getting very close together, uh, or that are very arched in this way, you want to go and minimize that as much as possible. Um, as I say, I go and actually shave a section of them because mine are so extreme. Uh, just in daily life, a form of corrective makeup, I suppose. Um, however, the other thing is that you will want to go and put some highlighter in between. Because highlighter tends to make stuff stretch out. Now, I did this before with the brow ridge having highlighter in here, but I just did it on the brow ridge. I'm also going to put highlighter in between these two eyes because one of the things that is built into your brain that you absolutely can't do anything about is you look at certain animals and people and make a snap judgment would this taste good for lunch? Or 
Does this think I would taste good for lunch? And the way you do this is you look at the eyes. Animals that eat other animals for lunch have eyes as we do on the front of their head. Animals that spend a lot of time being eaten by others for lunch have eyes on the sides of their heads. So, on the most primitive basis, your brain looks at eyes that are close together and says, it's going to eat me, or at any rate, bite me. And when it sees eyes that are far apart, it thinks, oh, that looks tasty. So, if you want to look tasty rather than threatening, you will most probably, unless you have very wide spaced eyes, want to go and put a little bit of extra light color in here. And if, like me, you have very deep set eyes, you're going to put that extra in here. And it will make the eyes seem like they're further apart. In other words, they will make you look more like something that tastes good than something that's going to bite you. One of the things in Chinese opera that is quite charming is they have a makeup that's for comedy clowns. And it's very simple. Flesh tone except for a white circle that goes right there. And it looks very strange when you see it up close. When you see it on stage, it gives a person an expression that's sort of like, hi, I'm dim, but very nice. So filling in that area with extra light tends to go and make those further apart. So my evil eyebrows become a little bit less scary. Another thing is my eyebrows tend to go down here, and I have this lid that goes up and over. So I'm going to go and add an extra white there, since that will suggest that there's more distance between there and there. Now a lot of times, if you've got very big eyes, you actually can put in a darker color there to go and uh, do as eyeshadow does, give it extra color. However, because I've got this fairly glowering brows, I have to go and put extra stuff in there to make the glowering brows less glowering. Uh, something that one often does in corrective makeup is if you have blonde or light colored brows, you'll actually use your brown eyebrow pencil, one use for it, uh, to go and put in small hair-like strokes to make sure that your eyebrows show up. Light blonde and reddish eyebrows have a tendency to almost completely disappear on stage. And so if you don't put a little extra brown in in short hair-like strokes, you have this odd appearance of having no eyebrows at all. Uh, this is obviously not something I have to do. And I, in fact, do nothing to go and make mine darker because that would tend to make them look more threatening. So I don't do that. Uh, other things. You can make your eyes look slightly bigger also by putting highlighter in a little line underneath your eyes. From a distance, this will seem to add to the white in your eyes and give you somewhat larger looking eyeballs. Then you take a shadow color and put in a line just below that, very thin. like that. Now some people will need to go and use that line all the way across. I of course am not doing the line all the way across because I'm trying to make sure my eyes don't look too close together. I'm putting extra darkness in here. We'll fight that. But this extra little line in here looks from a distance like it is your lower eyelash. 
and so it makes that extra white seem like adding to the size of your eyes. So if you have this problem of the glowering eyebrows, you can make that go away. Uh, if you have not much in the way of eyelashes and you don't have this glowering eye thing, you may do something similar to this, not with the white, but just with the line of dark on your upper eyelid. And you can go and use that as an eyeliner to make that show up better. But be careful of putting too much dark close to your eyes or it will look sort of like black holes in a sheet. Uh, where you just sort of stuck holes in it. Now, as I said, if you have a long nose, you make it shorter. If you have a short nose, you make it longer. My nose has a little bit of bump, rounded tip, and is fairly small. So what I want to do is I want to make it less bumpy, I want to make it more straight, and I want to make it seem a little bit longer. So to do that, I'm going to go and I'm going to start the highlighter up at this place where I put a fair amount of highlighter. I'm going to start it up a little higher than this divot here. And I'm going to carry it down, tip of my nose, and actually take the highlighter not where it just goes to the end of the nose, but where it goes past the end of the nose. As if the end of my nose were here, not here. And this will help create the optical illusion that it's a bit longer. I'm then going to take shadow and run it along here. Unlike when I was doing myself only more so where I emphasize the little divot that's between the bony section and the rounded section, I'm going to try and straighten this out a little. Myself perfectly neat straight nose. And I'm going to carry that shadow a little further down also because I want to suggest that the end of the nose is actually here, not here. Because normally you'd only carry it about as far as where the tips of the, where the edge of your nostrils are. But this makes it look a bit longer. So then I put highlighter on the nostrils. Let those show up. And I have a little bit longer of a nose. I don't want to do too much. Or it ends up looking very strange. But... I now have a look at nose I can look down under. Other things. Uh, cheekbones. I have cheekbones in approximately a normal place. They don't really need much of anything. The only thing is I have sort of heavy jowly stuff going on with my face and we tend to admire thinner people. So I'm going to go and this time make that cheekbone more pronounced as it is more pronounced on skinnier faced people. So I put it in the usual spot, but I make sure it's a little stronger and I carry it a little longer. Then I take the shadow that I was doing last time and instead of just doing a little bit of one, I carry it through quite a bit more. Starts out dark here, goes there, and then here. And it gives you a slightly thinner look to your face. This, by the way, is a cultural thing. Um, at different time periods in history, you would go and do different things in makeup to your face to do what was considered corrective at the time. For instance, in the 18th century, uh, one of the things that was very popular was to do something rather similar to what I did in the self-only more so makeup, to make your cheeks appear rounder and sort of plump. 
And in fact, there were these things called plumpers that people would sometimes put into their face if they had a very thin face, usually when they had lost side teeth, at which point you sometimes get a very skeletal looking face, they'd go and put in little things that sort of hid the fact that they were missing teeth and that made your face look rounder because a round, healthy face was something that was associated with wealth and good things. Uh, poor people were associated with having very thin faces. So now that poor people are associated with being stuck living on craft noodles and cheese, uh, a <laughs> round face is more uh, undesirable. And a skinny face that says, I can spend hours practicing at the gym and going swimming and doing sports and doing all this sort of stuff and eating all my fancy vegetational diet food, that's more desirable. So now we go and put in things to make yourself look thinner. Um, then here. I'm not going to go and do anything to make this show up more. After all, I'm trying to look young and pretty and yet beautiful. So that's not going to get emphasized in the least. Uh, nor are the little lines through here, because that tends to make me look older. However, the line of the chin would be good, especially as what I need to do here is I need to do something to make these jowls go away, because they're a sign both of having weight in my face, which is not considered good in a thin culture. And it's also a sign of age that you're getting little wobbly bits down there. So what I'm going to do this time is much closer to what, uh, if you have a young, smooth jaw, you do normally, which is to say, I'm going to go and put a stripe of highlight suggesting a straight jaw right here. And because the lower part of my face tends to also be kind of square when a heart-shaped or oval shape is considered more average, um, I'm going to do stuff to my chin to make it also seem longer so that it gets into more of that pointed look. So I'm going to, on that, move the highlight on the chin so that instead of it just being all up here in a little round thing, it's got a lot of it that's going to this lower part, actually under the chin, slightly, to make it look longer in the center. Then I will take a shadow put it underneath this line, especially in this area where I have a little bit of dangling jowl. That dangling jowl is going to go away by having a little bit of shadow put in there. If you put too much, it really kind of looks strange and artificial. But a little bit of it you can get away with. even that out. So. Now for lips. I have a fairly average shaped mouth so I don't really have to do that much to it but as I'm getting older I'm pulling it in more. Generally speaking as you get older your tendency is to shrink your mouth which is one of the reasons when you do an age makeup you often make the lips smaller. Well, I'm trying to look younger, so I'm actually going to go and make the lips just the same, just a hair bigger. Um, also, if you have small lips, you want to go and do this. Um, so I'm going to take the red that would go on the lips. First, I'll do it just as the lips are. So 
so you can see the lines more clearly. Now this is about equivalent to if I just put on lipstick. Standard edge. However, if I want to go and make this look more extreme and a little bit more plump, I'll take it and just cheat the edge a little past the usual. So that it's just going a little above the edge. If you do too much, it looks cartoony, which is fine when we get to doing uh, a glamour drag type makeup, but not what you want to do for your Gilbert and Sullivan choruses. Well, unless we're doing our Gilbert and Sullivan choruses just a little strange. So it just makes it look a little plumper and more full. Now, the other thing you can do to make it look plumper and more full, instant collagen. Take your highlighter and using your highlighter, you're going to go and put a little shine on the lips. The center. Now again, if you do this too much, it becomes a bit too extreme. But you give yourself that little extra shine that makes them look rounder and fuller. And then, as before, you may want to use a darker color to outline the edge so it shows up at a distance. And again, this is something you can do with a pencil. I prefer to do it with a brush because I get more control in a thinner line. So, uh, other tricks you can do if you happen to have an eye color that uh, you want to go and make the most of, like uh, you happen to have a, a blue or a green that looks particularly nice, you can make sure that you blend into your highlighter toward the outer part, which will make your eyes look bigger, um, you can go and blend in color that is uh, similar to your own. So in my case, I will use my shadow color because it's uh, brownish. And I will put a little bit of shadow out at the sides. What this does is picks up the color of your eyes so that that color becomes more pronounced and rich. But it also goes and makes your eyes seem like they're further apart. It's the same thing, I taste good for lunch. Or as the cake in Alice in Wonderland says, eat me. So, I somehow got little dark spots down there. So, corrective makeup. Um, the one other thing you might wish to do, if you happen to have uh, not a lot of color in your face to begin with, you may want to go a bit more pink. You can take pinky colors and blend it into the shadow. You can also do this with dry rouge. Blend it in there. This is something, it depends on if you're doing drama or comedy. If you're doing a Gilbert and Sullivan chorus, yeah, you want to do this. You want to go and add yourself a little bit of extra pink. You can add the extra pink actually in any place that you've got a shadow, I might add. So you can go and put in a little bit in multiple places, and it adds a bit of extra color if you're starting to look uh, colorless. 
Um, you can also sort of use it as a substitute shadow, like for instance here where I've got a little indent. By putting a little pink there, it adds color and is a shadow, but it's not a very strong shadow. You can do that as well. Uh, however, there are sometimes when you're you're trying to look younger and prettier, but you're doing a drama and you don't want to have that made-up look that Rouge inevitably gives you, uh, at which point you do the earlier makeup without the extra color. So 